Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to prep and sell your assets on the Unity Asset Store. I personally wanted to figure out how I go about doing this so I could make little props and prop packs to sell on there. So I thought I'd share the information with you because trying to get a detailed view of it somewhere on the internet was a pain in the ass. So I'm going to go through it with the folder setup and everything and what you've got to do to get your props ready to sell in the store. So first of all you need to grab yourself Unity. Uh, go on unity.com and download the Unity Hub from here and uh, um, you'll have to make an account as well that you can use for the Asset Store and unity.com. Once you've done that you'll have this Unity Hub application which you can then install one of the latest versions of Unity. Uh, you can go on for one of the official releases or the pre-releases, the archive, whichever you prefer. Um, I just downloaded the latest one I think it was that was on the long-term support so this one. So once you've installed Unity, you can click on projects and start a new project. This is my setup. Um, I have three different projects to change the different render pipelines, and which we'll talk about a bit later on. But you want to start up with a new project, 3D Core, give it a name. So we'll call this one built in because that's the render pipeline we're going to do to begin with. Um, location, that's fine. Unity Cloud Organization, we're going to do Portod as publisher. If you haven't already set this up, um, go into assetstore.unity.com. Um, sell assets, publish a portal, you might need to fill in some details here um, to get this going. I can't really recall, and I'm not <laughs> going to set up a new one, but go on this as a publisher, you might have to fill in some information on here. This is where all your packages are going to be stored as a publisher. So once you're ready, you can click Create Project, and it'll start creating a 3D project. This will take a little while, so I'll skip ahead. So when it's all finished, it'll look like this. You'll have a sample scene, an uh, empty sample scene in Unity, and kind of this is what it'll look like. Um, first, before we do anything, we need to get the Asset Store publishing tools from the Asset Store. It's an add-on that'll let you check all of your assets and your files and your folder setup to make sure it's going to be all approved pretty much pretty quickly because the time it takes for um, them to review your uploaded assets is literally like six six weeks or so. So if you go on assetstore.unity.com, log into your account, and what we want to search for is Asset Store Publishing Tools. Search for that and it'll come up, here it is. The Asset Store Publishing Tools. You can see I've already purchased it and it's already in my assets, but it's free. Download this and uh, we will be able to open it in our Unity program. Go back into our Unity, we can click Window and Package Manager. Change this to My Assets and you'll be able to import the publishing tools to your project. Just import everything, let that go through. Once it's finished, you'll see you have Asset Store tools up on the top here. You can click the Uploader, which will add it to a tab on the right hand side, and you click the Validator. These are the two things that we will need going forward to check our assets before we can actually upload them properly. Log in with your account on the Asset Store Uploader. I'll just log in with mine. And you can see your asset packs here. If you've already got some, if you haven't got anything, then it might be blank. And then on the validator, well, that's fine as it is. So what you can see at the bottom here is we have our assets folder in our project folder. We need to um, make, create a load of new folders within this that will organize all of our work. First of all, I like to start with a folder of my name. This is my publishing name. It's Paul Todd. But within your folder of your publishing name, we can create a project. We're going to call it, uh, I'm going to call this one Fish because I'm going to use a fish as an example of how to upload and validate and everything. Um, you just basically call this whatever you are uploading. So if it's a chair, call it stylized chair or whatever, or realistic chair or whatever name you want to give the chair or literally anything you want to call it. I'm just going to call it Fish for now. Within this folder, I'm going to create a variety of folders. You can copy it, but I'll talk through it one by one as well. But first of all, create a new folder called built in. This is the render pipeline we're going to be use to begin with. We're going to create a new folder called info. This will be our uh, text file going forward. We need another one called meshes. This is where we'll include all of our meshes. Then we will create a new one called scenes. This is where we will save a sample scene for them to open within their project and another one called textures this is our first our basic setup to begin with we will add more going forward but this is to begin for built-in um, render pipelines this is what we're going to use so within the built-in um, folder we're going to create two new folders 
one called materials and one called prefabs. That is, that's basically our folder setup to begin with, okay? Before we've added any files, this is what I, I would expect to use. So what do we put in each one? Well, chances are you've already made your model and your texture files. Uh, you'll have a folder like this where you've got your FBX and your variety of textures. First of all, you can literally just drag and drop your FBX into your meshes file and get all your textures and drop, drop, drag and drop them into the texture files. Here we'll see now we've got our textures and our mesh. We can drag our mesh into our scene like this and you can see our fish. Our fish though, we need to make it a material. We've, yeah, we've got these textures, but we need to make a material. So first of all, in your built-in folder and the materials, double click on this, create a new material. And we will call this one, we'll just call it fish. You can call it whatever you want, but it's a fish texture material. Click this and you can then see in your inspector, but your albedo, metallics, and the normal map. We need to fill these in with the information from your textures. So you've organized your textures in the texture folder. So you can just click the texture folder and literally drag and drop them into the proper spaces. Your albedo goes into this, and this is your AO. So ambient inclusion goes in there. Um, metallic smoothness can go in there, and the normal map can go in there. This is our it will say this texture is not marked as a normal app. We can just click fix now and that'll, that'll sort that out. So now we have our material, which is our fish. We can just drag and drop this on and you can see it works straight away. This is our fish with the, with the fish material that we've just made. We, however, need to make this a prefab so people don't have to then download your project, upload the fish, then go into materials and do this and this and this every single time. Let's just make a prefab off the get go. It's dead simple to begin with. Let's make this fish. We'll set its position to be zero, zero, zero. So it's perfectly aligned. All you have to do is click this fish in your, under your scene, sections in your hierarchy, drag and drop into your prefab folder. This will automatically make prefab of your fish, where we can just keep dragging and dropping everywhere we go. We can double click this and you can see this is your fish's prefabs. Got a position, rotation, scale, everything. Uh, it might show a bit strange on here, but you just need to save, basically. Save our project, and it'll show the correct prefab there. So there we are. We've got our materials. We've got our prefabs. Uh, if we go back into it, we've got our meshes there for them to have, and uh, the textures, in case they need to change anything. To come back out your prefab, then you just click this little back arrow into your scene. So we can delete all these. This is our fish to begin with. You don't, you don't need to have it, but you can. So next, we need to save our scene in our folder. If you've already set one up um, like this, if, you, if you're just happy with this, and that's what you want them to be able to see when they download it, um, we can literally come up here, right-click, Save Scene As, and we've already set up our folder system. So we'll go in Scenes and click Save. Sorry, give it a name, <laughs> then click Save. Example Scene. And there we are, we've got our... We've got our scene here with our fish in. The last thing we need to do is create a text folder in our info folder. So double click on your info. What we now need to do is like open up Notepad on your computer or something and start uh, making your own text file. So thank you for down downloading from it's Paul Todd. Like and subscribe. Um, <laughs> whatever you fancy, but yeah. Have this, use this as an information tool, so if there's anything awkward about your file, or if there's anything difficult to set up, um, fill it all out in here. People would be really appreciative if they had the information that they needed, if there's something difficult to set up. Chances are you've already made your prefab and everything, and you're seen, so it's literally drag and drop. But if there is something awkward or difficult, or you just want to put some information, like all your social media or whatever in there, um, put it in there. Save it as a file on your computer, and you can literally, like what you did with the models and everything, just drag and drop that file into your info folder. So that's the info. This is everything you've done ready for your asset now with all the proper folders. We need to validate it to make sure it is all okay. Basically, this is a quick way of checking that it's not going to be rejected straight away when, um, when you come to uh, review it. So under the category, you want to click 3D, validation paths. We want to find the path of this fish that we just we just created so we can click add a path it's pulled hard fish select the fish folder and then click validate it will check through and see 
We had 27 passes, one warning, and one fail. So we need to check out why that failed. Those prefabs must have their position rotation set to zero and their scale set to one. So we go into our prefab. We're in the prefabs, fish. And we need to make sure it's not set to zero and the scale not set to one. If we check it, it is set to zero and it is set to one. Um, what I found a way to fix this is just literally right click and click reset. That should theoretically fix the issue. If we click validate again, it's gone. It just needs to be reset. So in under your prefabs, go on the inspector and the transform just click right click reset. Now the only one we have is check documentation. Um, if you ask it contains any screwed, we ask that you include blah, 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 blah. It's just a warning to make sure you've got all the information you need um, for your project. The chances are this is all going to get passed. Everything is perfect. There's nothing wrong with the model. We've got it all set up nicely. Um, so what do we need to do next? We need to upload it to our asset store. Under the asset store uploader, you can see I've got my two published ones. However, we don't have a space to upload this fish. Go into the, your portal under the Unity Publisher portal, and we want to create a package. I'm just going to call this fish. This is not actually going to be uploaded. I'm just using it to show um, you guys. We're going to click 3D, find out what, whatever you're uploading. So we're going to do 3D um, characters, animals, fish. There you go. Create package. So this is going to create us a package ready to start and it'll say upload via unity editor what we can do now is go back into unity if we click refresh there is our draft this is our fish and we can upload it from the assets folder on the path so it's under the fish that is the path and we've already validated it there is just that one morning that's fine and export and upload or you can just export. So if we click export and upload, it'll carry on. Upload success, done. Go back into our file here, refresh, and there it is. As you can see there, this is your file is uploaded. We've got our, the data when we've done it, the size of it, 2.2 megabyte. And what we need to do now is show which render pipeline our asset works with. We've created it just for the built-in pipeline in this tutorial so far. Um, so this is the only one we can check. Chances are you will want to create it for the high definition render pipeline and the universal render pipeline. Why is that though? The people looking to download your assets could be working in URP or HTRP for their projects. They might be on the search for say like a plant that is works in all of these things already. When they're looking through the store, they'll look to see if it has all these things ticked. Um, if it's just a built in, they might Rethink whether they want to download it because they can't be bothered to change it to those other pipelines. They're not very difficult to change, but people might not want to do that. So what you want to do is make sure these are all, you cover all pipelines just so you have more chance of people purchasing your assets. But before we get into that, I'll, I'll put the um, link in the description of when I'm going to talk about that. If you want to figure out how to change those. But before we talk about changing those, in, uh, different pipelines. We'll go through this quickly in case you're happy with just doing built-in assets. What I'll do is I'll show you through the next tabs using my um, free package just to show you what you need to include in your project. So just looking at my um, uh, stylized pumpkin that's on the store for free right now, um, we can click through the next sections. Release notes. It's first release. Chances are that's where yours is. We can just leave that as it is. Description, you want to give a nice summary of what your asset is. So universal, unique stylized pumpkin for the spooky season. Yours might be like a uh, kitchen pack or, or like three three different kitchen props or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, in the description part, we want to include what is inside our project. So we obviously we have an FBX file. We have a mesh consisting of however many tries yours is. You can check on Blender or whatever program you use. I'm using uh, PBR material and prefabs are both included for built-in and URP for this project. Um, currently, obviously we've only looked at built-in. And then I've got a 2K texture pack. Yours might not be 2K, it depends what you are exported as. Um, and then just a little thank you, any information or like email for 
if you want to include, or the social media. And in your details, you need to click whether it's a paid or free asset. Uh, the paid assets have to be at least $4.99, so make sure whatever you're uploading is worth at least $4.99. Um, obviously, this pumpkin that I uploaded was just a standalone pumpkin. I didn't think it was worth that much money, so I just put it as, as a free option. And put some search keywords in there for yourself. Under the media now, you want to include some nice renders and maybe some shots of it working in Unity, uh, some videos or a sketch fab link, whatever you want to do to advertise your prop because they'll see this and this will be the decider whether or not they, not they want to download the prop. Um, you also need to include an icon card and cover image. These are used within the store. The icon image uh, is about 160 by 160 pixels. The card image is roughly about one, uh, 420 by 280 and the cover image is 1950 by 1300. Um, I'll put these that information in the description as well. Make sure, what I, a mistake that I made, make sure you do not put any social media logos on these marketing, marketing images. Um, I did it for myself and got refused. My, my, um, my asset got refused because it had social media stuff within these marketing images. So just leave that out. And you can change the localization if you're able to speak Chinese, Korean, whatever. But I can only speak English, so I just leave it as that. Um, save your project, and then you can click Preview and kind of look to see what it looks like in the store. So this is it. This is all my marketing images. Um, the overview of what it contains and what it works in. Built-in URP. It doesn't. Obviously, this one doesn't work in HDRP. So if someone's working on that and they say that and they're like, "Oh, okay, it doesn't work." The file that I've uploaded doesn't work in HDRP. Um, but yeah, that's everything you need, basically. If we go back into our fish, um, obviously we didn't include any of these, but you can click Submit, and then it will send to Unity um, ready for review. As I said earlier in the video, the review time is roughly like six weeks or so. Um, my last free asset took six weeks and four days. So if you plan on making stuff for next month, like if you, right now it's November, if I wanted to make Christmas assets, it's not going to get approved by Christmas. So... You would have had to make it way in advance if you were ready to get if you wanted assets ready to sell for specific times in the year um <clears throat> it will happen eventually but if you follow the validation and everything chances are it should get approved there shouldn't be a reason for it not to be because you follow the regret steps of validating your assets so that's the gist of prepping your asset getting the correct folders and getting it uploaded and validated on the unity store ready to go actual for sale in the next several weeks um good way to get some side money if uh if what you create actually does sell it all is all dependent on what you make and how good it is and whether people want it or not as i said earlier guys if you want to check out how to turn it into hdrp and urp i'll show that in the next video um thank you so much for watching if it's useful to you guys please click, click the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel i really appreciate it and i'll keep making more videos thanks so much guys catch you in the next one